Thursday, March 21st, marked the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. On this day in South Africa in 1960, police opened fire and killed 69 people at a peaceful demonstration in what became known as the Sharpeville Massacre. It was on this day that U.S. President Barack Obama spoke in Jerusalem during his visit. He did not address the significance of the day, despite a visible and increase in recent years in discrimination against minorities in Israel. He instead focused on the threat to the ethnic purity of the country if the two-state solution is not realized. Given the demographics west of the Jordan River, the only way for Israel to endure and thrive as a Jewish and democratic state is through the realization of an independent and viable Palestine. That is true. Many used the opportunity to draw comparisons between discriminatory policies in Israel and in South Africa or the American South under Jim Crow. Writing in the Huffington Post, Rana Zawabi says today a country that professes to be the only democracy in the Middle East has announced the creation of segregated bus transportation in the West Bank. What for many is both ludicrous and an outdated form of segregation is for us the reality of one of the many policies Israel employs to disenfranchise Palestinians. In recent years, the number of hate crimes in Israel has nearly doubled, according to the annual report on racism. Such attacks have especially spiked this year, with a report showing increases in discriminatory attacks and incitement to racism against migrant workers, African refugees, various Jewish sectors, and above all, against Arab and Muslim people. While most such attacks go unreported, some do receive media attention. At the end of February, a group of religious Jewish women attacked and tore off the headscarf of a Palestinian woman waiting for a city train. A day earlier, a mob of angry teenagers attacked a Palestinian street cleaner in Tel Aviv, yelling Arab at him. They beat him over the head with a bottle, causing severe damage to his eye. <laughs> A month earlier, half a dozen attacks were recorded against the offices and leaders of the Beitar soccer team for recruiting two Muslim players. At one game, fans unraveled a banner reading Beitar must remain pure forever. הצתת מועדון ביתר ירושלים הערב אנחנו מביאים לראשונה את עדויות הנאשמים בהצתה מתוך חקירתם במשטרה. שם הם מודים ששרפו את המועדון בגלל ההחלטה להחתים שחקנים מוסלמים. חוקר, למה מפריע לכם שיהיו שחקנים מוסלמים בקבוצה? יוסף, אני רוצה קבוצה של לב אחד ועם יהודי. אין לי שנאה ספציפית לזרים, אני אוהב ששחקנים בקבוצה יאהבו את המנורה, ולא בשביל כסף. המניע הגזעני שזור לאורך כל החקירות, התחושה שנחצו כל הקווים שאי אפשר שלא לעשות מעשה. חוקר, האם זה שבביתר יהיו שחקנים מוסלמיים זה מה שפוגע באוהדים? נבון כן. חוקר למה? נבון, לא יודע למה, זה המצב. אנשים גדלו על זה, על העקרונות האלה, זה מה שלימדו אותנו. תאירה בוראס, whose organization works to advocate civic equality in Israel, says the incitement and violence are a product of Israel's discriminatory legal and planning systems. Look at it this way. If you're an eight or nine-year-old kid, a eight or nine-year-old Jewish kid in Israel, um, and you see day in, day out, whether it's through the different media outlets in Israel, whether it's through the, by the political leaders, beginning from the prime minister and all the way down, or by your, commu your own community leaders, wh whether it's in your own synagogue or in your own community center, um, this kind of treatment towards the Arabs, denigrating the Arab uh, minority in Israel, looking at them as the other, as the, as the enemy that you should always be careful of. Um, when you internalize these kinds of feelings, it only becomes normal. Following the growing number of incidents of racial and religious violence, the Ministry of Education this year ordered students across the country to address the subject with students. But street-level racism is only the symptom of the problem, according to the Coalition Against Racism in Israel. Its report showed incitement to hate by public figures has nearly doubled in the past year. When it comes to um, budget distributions or when it comes to um, introducing new laws to the country, um, it makes a difference whether you're Arab or Jewish. 
Um, if we take the last parliament, the last Knesset session, for example, which was the 18th Knesset, which was considered to be one of the most racist and anti-democratic um, parliaments, there were many legislative bills that uh, most of them did not uh, go through out of fear of, of uh, more Israeli isolation, but the fact that they were still introduced scares many, you know. Such as what? For example, um, MK Danny Danone from the Likud who wanted to uh, introduce or who introduced a bill that um, would want to prevent sexual relations between Arab and Jewish citizens uh, in the state of Israel, a law that reminds us of the Nuremberg laws. Uh, in a report to the UN Commissioner for Human Rights ahead of last year's conference against racism, several Israeli rights groups outlined the extent of racism and incitement in Israel. Although there is an existing ban on hate speech, there are serious problems with enforcement. Over the years, the law has been used sparingly and has rarely been used on Jewish religious leaders, a group overproportionately involved in racial incitement. Discrimination in Israel is based on what Oren Iftachel of the Ben-Gurion University in the Negev terms ethnocracy. A big part of the political geography of Israel-Palestine is actually shaped by the land system. Jewish expansion more or less ceased. The Zionist colonial uh, uh, settlement no longer continues to expand. The opposite. Israel starts to retract. It retreated from Lebanon. It retreated from Gaza. And I'm talking about the, the territory of Israel, Palestine. It retreated from the Palestinian cities. But this is not coupled with genuine reconciliation. This is not coupled with redistribution. This is not coupled with uh, an attempt to give the Palestinian an equal status. So it's it's a, it's a readjustment or a consolidation uh, uh, without reconciliation. And that actually creates a process of radicalization on both sides. It's about land and who owns the land in this country. Now, the Israeli government um, owns, uh, through the Jewish Federation, owns over 93% of the land in Israel. Um, the Arab minority in Israel, which is about 20% of the population, owns less than 3% of the land. If we take all Arab towns in Israel, their land mass has not grown over the last 65 years. Meaning a town that had, let's say, uh, a population of 10,000 people 30 years ago, has still the same amount of hectares that it had that it had then today even though today it's a town of 30 or 40,000 if you're a Jewish citizen in Israel you have many options of housing you can live in a kibbutz you can live in a moshav you can live in a city you can live in a, a lonely farm which is one farm for one family but if you're an Arab citizen you don't have much options you're most likely going to live in the same town that you were born in your parents were born in and your grandparents were born in why um, first of all, there are no, there has not been, the Israeli government has not built not even one single Arab city ever since the creation of the country in 1948. Seeing widespread impunity, some citizens are taking action in their own hands. In February, a young couple and an elderly woman accosted Palestinian children in Jerusalem for speaking Arabic on the bus. The children were students at the only bilingual school in the city, a project of the Yad Biyad organization. Kifah Abdul Halim is Yad Biyad's media coordinator. Israel's <laughs> ועונש יחסית חמור, אם יהודי תוקף ערבים, יכול להיות שבכלל uh, הוא יצא מזה נקי. In protest of the apathy of officials from the city and the Eged bus company, the children's parents decided to personally accompany the students on the bus, inviting the media. <laughs> the state's unwillingness to prosecute Jewish perpetrators of hate crimes was crystallized when a group of youth who recently beat Palestinian teenagers so severely one of the victim's heart stopped 
were given exceptionally light sentences. The same day of the attack, settlers in the West Bank threw a Molotov cocktail at a Palestinian taxi, burning the six passengers inside, including a four-month-old baby. They were acquitted. <laughs> For The Real News, I'm Leah Tarachansky.